to our traders. We're pulling in another floor show here. We've we've managed to corral Tom Hayes, Phil Flynn, and Steve Chevron. Uh, Steve is from Federated Hermes. Um, okay, Tom, give me a sense as you look at even the home improvement guys right now. It's a, been a really tough month overall when you look at 30,000 feet, but are there other best buys to improve your profits that you see at least with about 29 minutes left to trade? Yeah, Liz, uh, well, th thanks for having me. The, the key that I'm seeing here today is that it feels like it's a risk-off day. However, when you look at the 10-year yield, it's actually steepening. The yield curve is steepening, and the regional banks Why are leading. Why is that? I noticed that. So this is not a liquidation. This is a rotation. And the market actually traded the exact same way in 2016 in the days going to the election. If you look at a Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and Google, which reported, they, tr they average 39 times forward earnings for 31% earnings growth versus the S&P, which trades at 20 times forward for 24% percent earnings growth in 2021. This is a rotation from high valuation stocks to low valuation stocks. And you hit the nail on the head with Mohawk Industries because they're going to grow at 37 percent earnings growth next year. And they're only trading at 11.9 times forward estimates. So you are seeing this move into cyclicals and cyclicals outperform historically in the six months following the election. So you're having a little breather in tech, despite the fact that all four beat top and bottom lines and they they have their nuanced risks and guidance that we went through uh, with, with the earnings, but you are seeing this performance of regional banks and, and to your point, building supplies, which with 85 million millennials starting housing formation, this trend is going to continue yeah. for a long, yeah. long time. Steve Chavarone over at Federated Hermes, you've got about $360 billion in assets. You're, you can't tell me you're not at least eyeing or buying something right now. What is it? No, I think it's an opportunity. Look, you've got an economy that has exited recession. It's in recovery, and there's a little bit of weakness here, and there may be some uncertainty and weakness over the coming weeks. We we agree with the, the rotation idea, and, and we started buying in, in August. It's paid off, and we're going to continue. We're buying value sectors. We're buying small caps, and we're buying dividends. Uh, and if you look, you know, since September 2nd, values outperformed growth by 4.5%. Smalls are 5.5% better than large, dividends 8% better than tech. And we think once you get to January and you're past the uncertainty and you have a president and stimulus is in place, the Fed's still on the sidelines, and you've got further development of treatments and vaccines, it's going to be a really good environment for cyclicals. We would use weakness to add to those positions. Okay. Phil Flynn, uh, we're 10 points away from the session low for the NASDAQ. What's going on here? What are you seeing as far as your computer uh, screens and the flows, where people are? If, if Tom is right, Tom said it's not a liquidation, it's a rotation. What are you seeing? No, I, I would absolutely agree with him and both of those gentlemen. That's what you're seeing right now. And, and it, it is based a lot on, on fear of what's going to happen with this election. And, and people are pulling back a little bit. And I think it's even worse because there's a lot of concerns about COVID and, and more lockdown. So uncertainty is driving this. But where are you going to put your money, right? You're not going to be putting it into bonds. You know, you're looking for some yield. And so you, there are some bargains on this rotation play. Um, what, <laughs> You know, we're going into Halloween. Look at some of the food stocks, the candy stocks right now. They should be yielding pretty good right now. Uh, Nestle's, for example, Tootsie Roll, some of these little ones, they're going to probably hold up pretty good. And besides, um, the grocery stocks, I think, are going to do great. You know, if we're going to go to another lockdown, one of the hedges that we saw during the last lockdown were the grocery stocks. They've continued to do very, very well. You know, if you look at uh, Kroger, for example, which has had a little bit of a pullback at its run. Costco's had a little bit of a pullback. So if we're going to go into a lockdown mode after uh, the election, that's going to way to be. But mm -hmm. I, I do think there is uncertainty about the election. But I think no matter who gets elected, we're going to have a honeymoon period, right? Because once we have that certainty, we know, you know, forget about the long term impact of some of the policies of the president. In the short term, we know the odds are high that we're going to get a stimulus. Now, down the road, you know, when, you know, if, if you look at a, at, at a Biden presidency or a Trump presidency, then the market's going to take the larger yeah. context of what those policies are going to mean. And that's when you're really going to see the move. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tom, I, I'm just looking at my screens here. 
Uh, you've got Pitney Bowes, I'm talking randomly, down 29%. Twitter's losing 21%. Uh, Goodyear Tire down 15%. And, and I'm just wondering, is there, is there a common thread here? Or is it, as we said, people just don't want to go in long on a Friday? Yeah, I, I think what you want to look for is high quality bellwether stocks that are relatively inexpensive, Liz. You know, one, one of the stocks we talked about earlier this week was Raytheon. And guess what? Just this week on the weakness, Greg Hayes, the CEO, bought three over $3 million of stock himself. He wrote a check. A couple of the directors bought seven-figure checks worth of stock as well. So you're seeing these reasonably valued, high-quality stocks. And by the way, next year, if you look at earnings growth, industrials, materials, financials are all going to grow as fast, if not faster, than the S&P 500 in terms of earnings growth, whereas yeah. Infotech is going to grow at half the pace of the S&P 500. They've pulled a ton of earnings growth forward in into 2020, and in okay. 2021, we're going to see that rotation. Uh, and, and Steve, you talked about what you like right now, some of the dividend players. What do you search for? Kind of give our uh, viewers an actual primer here. How do you find good quality stocks that pay dividends? You don't just want to pay a, a, for a stock that has a high dividend. It could be junk. No, that's right. You want not only dividend yield, but you want dividend growth, and, and you want companies that have the balance sheets that even when they're under pressure, you know, they're able to continue to, to, to maintain and grow that dividend. You know, another point, Liz, is, you know, when you think about the outcome of the election, which I think is impacting the market, a, a, a Democratic sweep is unlikely to be very good for tech, both in terms of the corporate tax increase disproportionately hitting tech. And if we do raise the capital gains rate, a lot of people are going to want to harvest capital gains this year, and they're going to where, where are the capital gains? Well, they're in big growth in tech, and so I think that's one of the reasons why you see, despite what were pretty good numbers uh, from the big tech companies yesterday, you know how weak they are today. Um, and so, where do we like the opportunity? Autos, durables, transports, consumer services. It, it, there's a play on reopening once we get through this. You know what's what's likely to be a, a few yeah, really rough yeah. weeks here. We think you're getting good discounts on those plays. Great to have you, Steve, Phil, Tom. Good insight. At a very tense time, folks, I do want to